This is Tomo News for Thursday, July 6th. Puppy abandoned an airport bathroom by abused owner. Tomo sapiens, grab a box of tissues while you still can. This three-month-old puppy was found alone in a Las Vegas airport bathroom, accompanied by this note. The letter tells a sad tale of an owner trying to escape an abusive relationship, left with no choice but to leave behind Chewy, her miniature chihuahua. The handwritten note details that the owner was involved in some sort of domestic dispute with her boyfriend. In the heat of the moment, little Chewy got caught in the middle and allegedly received a kick to the head from the enraged boyfriend. Running for her life, the owner rushed to McCarran Airport with Chewy in hand. She claims she couldn't afford the cost of getting the pup on the flight and instead left Chewy in the airport bathroom, hoping a compassionate soul out there would find him and get the bump on his head checked out. Chewy's sad story was posted to Twitter on July 3rd. A local dog rescue has since taken him in and reports dozens of kind people have already stepped up and applied to give Chewy a new home. Looks like the little guy's gonna be all right. Here's hoping his mom got the help she needed too. Power line saves skimpily clad woman from falling to her death. A woman in China was spotted dangling from a power line in her underwear after just barely escaping splatting all over the sidewalk from five stories up. Naturally, the Chinese internet is abuzz with wild speculation that this skimpily clad woman was a mistress trying not to get caught by the wife. I guess when you're that desperate, even the window ledge outside your lover's fifth floor apartment can seem like a good idea until you slip and fall. Luckily, Chinese cities have plenty of power lines, and the woman managed to get caught on one. Messy death averted. But she was left hanging on a line and quickly passed out from the shock. She's probably dying of embarrassment too, what with everything splattered all over the interwebs. But at least she's still alive. And you never know, she could have just been innocently thoroughly cleaning her windows in her underwear like you do. Cause it's China, where anything can happen. North Korea is growing its military might. U.S. authorities said on Wednesday that the intercontinental ballistic missile fired by North Korea on Tuesday was a new type of missile that the country had never seen before. The Hwasong-14 intercontinental ballistic missile contained a redesigned second stage. The second stage reportedly had a separate 30-second burn cycle that allowed the missile to travel farther, making it an intercontinental ballistic missile. U.S. officials confirmed the missile was capable of traveling more than 3,500 miles, meaning it would be able to reach Alaska. The United States conducted a joint missile exercise with South Korea in response to North Korea's ICBM test. North Korea said its missile was capable of carrying a large-sized, heavy nuclear warhead, but U.S. military experts doubt the country has the ability to develop a nuclear warhead that can be fitted into long-range missiles. Cops take down father who shot his family. A suspected domestic dispute that took place the morning after Independence Day ended in a slaughter, with four people dead and one severely wounded in a small town near central Maine. Police say at around 7.30 a.m., 51-year-old Carol Tuttle Jr. shot and killed his 52-year-old wife Lori and his 25-year-old son Dustin in their family home. The suspect then traveled down the street and shot dead his 57-year-old neighbor, Michael Spaulding. Tuttle reportedly returned to his home afterward. His wife's brother-in-law, Harvey Austin, happened to be waiting outside the residence, where he was also shot multiple times. Three Somerset County deputies arrived on scene and fatally shot Tuttle in his driveway. The brother-in-law, Harvey Austin, is reportedly recovering in hospital from non-life-threatening gunshot injuries. Police have yet to pinpoint a motive for the triple murder shooting spree, which is being reported as Maine's most deadly gun-related incident in roughly two years. Topless activists protest bullfighting. Meanwhile, a matador gets gored in the cojones. As the nine-day running of the bulls in Pamplona, Spain approaches, activists have taken to the streets to protest bullfighting and bull running. Around 100 topless animal rights activists from Animal Naturalis and PETA, of course, took to the streets of Pamplona on Wednesday, wearing bull horns with their bodies painted with fake blood. The bull run draws runners donning white shirts and red scarves from across the world to the 875 meter course through the streets of Pamplona every year. Plenty of casualties subsequently occur uh, annually. Fun! Last Sunday, thousands gathered at Madrid's world-famous Plaza de Toros de las Ventas bullring, where a matador named Juan Miguel was gored in the balls. 
On the same day, French matador Andy Yones was gored by a raging bull, but Yones somehow finished the show despite his bloodied head. The two severely wounded matadors were later taken to a hospital from the venue's medical facility. Doctors said Miguel was in critical condition, but reserved diagnosis for the Frenchman. The controversial bull run officially starts Friday, regardless of the naked protesters in the streets.